Hi, I'm Julie from PAC TV, and we're providing the candidates for the Board of Selectmen in the town of Kingston this opportunity to let the voters get to know them. Each candidate will be given three minutes for a candidate statement, wherein they will outline their campaign message. They will then be asked two questions and have two minutes to answer those questions. There are five candidates running for two positions for this office. We'd like to welcome Don Alcombright. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You will have three minutes. Thank you. First, I would like to thank PAC TV for this opportunity to address the public through their platform. My name is Don Alkenbright, and I'm a candidate for a three-year appointment to the Kingston Board of Selectmen. I have a bachelor's degree in information systems from Daniel Webster College, and I'm a manager for a software company in Boston. I'm currently the vice chair of the Capital Planning Committee and a longtime volunteer at the Kingston Animal Shelter. I was also involved with the ad hoc committee to better town meeting when it was active. I feel it is advantageous to keep our town quaint, a place where people know and care about each other. At the same time, we need a healthy balance of attracting new businesses, which will help alleviate the tax burden on residents. I want our schools to flourish, our services to thrive, and above all, I want our residents to feel comfortable participating in local government. I am passionate about the concept of volunteer projects that benefit our town, no matter how big or small the endeavor. We have a great community of people that want to help, and I am, strong, I am also a strong advocate of organized sports. It is important to keep our town active and healthy. I can visualize more hiking and biking trails as well. On the other hand, I have witnessed a certain amount of divisiveness with our current Board of Selectmen. It is imperative that the five individuals serving on this board work together for the betterment of the town. If I am elected, I pledge to work to restore the harmony necessary for us to collaborate for us to be a collaborative body where each member has an equal opportunity to voice their opinion. COVID-19 is the most pressing priority currently facing the town. With the financial impact that will be occurring over the next couple of months and even years, it is critical to get this right. If elected, I will see what purchases or projects can be delayed, lessening the impact on staff layoffs. It will also be a top priority to recommend that open forum be reinstated. It is important that the voices of our constituents not be silenced as long as they are being respectful. Third, we must begin to rebuild employee morale, particularly at Town Hall. I would work on a strategy to resolve the problem. Any employees that wish to discuss morale issues or any other pertinent town topics with me, I will always be available. I'm an independent thinker and believe strongly that transparency is always the best policy. I believe in a strong school system that benefits all students, a continuation of our excellent town services, athletic facilities that give everyone the opportunity to play and stay safe, volunteer community service, and unified town government. I hope that on June 27th, you will cast your ballot in my direction. Don Alkenbright for selection. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you. First question, how would you differentiate yourself from your opponents? You will have two minutes. My experience with information technology allows me to bring the town's technological capabilities up to date. For example, all committee meetings should be recorded and archived to enable important information to be retrieved and examined if necessary. The website needs a refresh, making it more user-friendly and more easily accessible. Streamlining the website would make it easier on town employees and residents alike. Making purchases and obtaining permits should require a simple click of a button. These are improvements that would be able to address when the pandemic restrictions ease. During this brief campaign, and even during this past year, I have discussed some of these technological improvements with residents. And they have been well received. Improvements that include project monitoring and tracking and official Facebook or Twitter pages. We should also be using robocalling because it is the best way to quickly and efficiently communicate with all demographics of our community. My plan would be to bring collaboration back to the town. I pledge that if elected, my voice will be the voice of the people and that residents may contact me at any time with questions or concerns that they may have. My wife, Tammy, and I are raising our twins in this beautiful town. We're about to enter kindergarten this fall. While I am concerned about rising taxes, we need to find balance without compromising our services. While our schools and our town services are exemplary, it is important to always leave the door open for new ideas. I believe it is important for residents to work together to improve the community by volunteering. I'll be available to help organize in any way I can. Volunteering is one way to save money, to have pride in your community, and to bring residents together. With the financial impacts of COVID-19 will be even more necessary to lean on the community for help. Thank you. 
Thank you. Second question. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You again will have two minutes. With the COVID-19 virus upon us still and no end in sight to control it, we need to take a hard look at our budget across the board. First, it is crucial that we look to find out where we can save without cutting jobs. What projects can be put on hold or reassessed? We need to be making monetary decisions that will have the least impact on our schools and community as a whole. With the possibility of jobs being on the line because of cuts in state and federal aid, we need to carefully assess our priorities. Therefore, it is imperative that we have a board of selectmen that can work together now more than ever. Second, the morale problem at Town Hall needs to be addressed as soon as possible. I believe with training, harassment workshops, anonymous surveys, and one-on-one -on -one meetings, we'll be able to work together and change the atmosphere at Town Hall. I want employees to understand you have my undivided attention. If elected, I will personally investigate this matter right away. We want Town Hall to function as a well-oiled machine, especially during the current crisis affecting all of our families. Finally, we need to address transparency in our local government. We can do this through various measures, one of which is to simply make data more readily available to residents in easy to read formats. All elected officials and interested residents should receive all pertinent information concerning agendas and supporting documentation for up and coming meetings. Agendas should be clear, concise, and informative. Some sensitive information cannot be made public for obvious reasons. And finally, we need to restore open forum to start building residents' trust back in our local government. So to reiterate, we need to address the financial impacts of COVID-19, work on any morale issues, and finally focus back on transparency. Thank you again for this time, and I hope you consider me, Don Alkenbright, for Selectman come June 27th. Thank you, Don Alkenbright. Welcome, Jess Kramer. Hi, Julie, how are you? Good, thank you. Please proceed with your candidate statement, Jess. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Jess Kramer, and over the past year, I have been honored to serve as your Selectman. I am now asking for your vote for the opportunity to continue my service for a full three-year term. As your voice, I will continue to represent the people of Kingston, and I will continue to fight for anyone who believes their voice is not being heard by our town government. I love this town because I love the people of this town, and despite our differences, there is more that unites us than divides us. Despite our challenges, I believe Kingston's best days are still ahead of us. A new generation of voices has entered the dialogue, new faces are engaging in town affairs, and new approaches are ultimately leading us forward. We are stronger when all voices are heard. And as a selectman, I have worked tirelessly to fight for the interests of the families, businesses, and residents that make this community special. I will always put people before politics. Over the past year, I believe I have established myself as an independent voice. As a selectman, I have never forgotten that I serve all the residents of Kingston. I will work hard to be accessible. Before the pandemic, I held regularly scheduled office hours and my phone is always open for anyone who may need a selectman to listen or to fight for them. I will support you and I hope to continue to serve as an independent voice for you for three more years. I would be honored to have your vote and your support for my candidacy for selectman on June 27th. Thank you. Thank you. First question. How would you differentiate yourself from your opponents? You have two minutes. Over the past year, I believe I have proven myself to be a fighter for Kingston residents. I am not afraid to swim against the current and to stand up for what I believe in. In the past, when a developer threatened to alter the character of one of our neighborhoods, putting profits before people, I stood up to protect that neighborhood. In Indian Pond, Residents were threatened with an expansive solar panel project on land known as the Ophel Pits that would have deforested the town owned woodlands behind their homes. The residents were told that the forested land behind their homes was filled with trash. They were told that cutting down these trees and putting up these solar panels would be an improvement. I stood up and I helped the residents organize a cleanup for the property. Together we showed the town that we cared about our green spaces. We showed that even people who sometimes disagree can come together for common good. With enough political pressure, the developer dropped the proposed uh, plans for the Indian Pond neighborhood. I know what it takes to stand up for what I believe in, even when it is unpopular with the board, because I've been there before. And I know what it takes to build broad coalitions in Kingston, 
because I've built them before. I believe those qualities are what makes me stand out. Thank you. Second question. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You have two minutes. As your selectman, I will, I will work to restore the open forum portion of the Board of Selectmen meetings so that our residents can publicly petition their government and have their voices heard. It has been said that open forum is a citizen's access to government, and I believe that the citizens should have access to their Board of Selectmen. I will fight so that Kingston can remain affordable and continue to attract those seeking to raise families here. I want our seniors to be able to enjoy their golden years in Kingston. So I will fight to keep the tax burden manageable for all of our residents. But I will also defend the things that make Kingston a place that is so appealing. That includes our schools, our public services, and our open spaces. Lastly, it's my priority to show that Kingston can work together. I want to show what it looks like to have a board of selectmen that communicates efficiently with each other and with the town residents. Over the next three years, I hope to restore confidence in the board of selectmen and show that all residents of Kingston are truly represented. Thank you, Jess Kramer. Welcome, Sandy McFarlane. Welcome, Sandy. Welcome, thank you. Thank you. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you to PAC TV for this opportunity to speak to you. I'm Selectman Sandy McFarland, and I'm honored to have served you as a member of the Board of Selectmen for 15 years. Let me start off by saying that there is so much at stake in Kingston in this upcoming election. The COVID-19 health crisis has caused unprecedented issues for our town, and we have been working in uncharted waters. But my experience as a longtime board member has prepared me to face those challenges of utmost importance was maintaining the safety and well-being of our residents, especially our senior citizens. This pandemic has also caused serious budget challenges due to reductions in state aid and local receipts. Meeting those budget issues is an ongoing project at this time and helps, and helps meet our budget requirements while main, minimizing the impacts to residents and our valued town employees. This successful management is a result of our team efforts and the energy and integrity of board chairman Josh Warren, as well as the experience and vision of board vice chair Elaine Fiore. Your select board has met almost on a daily basis throughout the pandemic in order to address this crisis in a timely fashion. I am proud to be part of a board that is willing to give so much of their time and talents to the service of others. Our hard work in Kingston's economic growth is leading to new commercial tax revenues which will help stabilize residential taxes. <clears throat> While the pandemic threatened those commercial projects, because of the work the selectmen to handle the crisis, not one of those projects was delayed or canceled. I believe that this election is one of the most important ones in decades. Your choices will impact not only the, how the town follows through on major projects, but could also change the culture of our town as well. Make no mistake, your vote matters. And for the Board of Selectmen seat, you have a clear choice between those who would work for the good of the town in an informed, professional, and respectful manner, or those who use their efforts for negative attacks and bring obstructionism to the table. I assure you that once back in my seat, I will continue to serve with integrity, vision, and respect for all. I promise that my decisions will be based on evidence and data-driven research as always, and that my efforts will always be for the best interests of the town we call home, Kingston, Mass. Thank you for this time. Thank you. First question, how would you differentiate yourself from your opponents? You have two minutes. Well, I believe that <clears throat> long-time experience Institutional and accurate knowledge is of critical importance to our ability to lead this town in response to its many challenges and its many opportunities. Because I have served the citizens of this town for five terms as a selectman, I do possess the knowledge and experience to do the job during these difficult times. And I understand the people's struggle to meet these challenges. People often forget that we're residents too and, this, and are struggling just as much as they are. These difficult times require the skill, professionalism, and personal demeanor to address our community challenges in the appropriate manner and to get the 
the appropriate results. Also, to recognize that clear and calm minds must prevail. These are the qualities that clearly distinguish me from the other candidates for the Board of Selectmen. Okay, thank you. Second question. Thanks. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation, and how do you plan to fulfill them? You have two minutes. Okay. Our priorities must include the best education possible for our children, providing senior citizens safe and appropriate services, and working towards tax relief for our residents by increasing our economic development efforts. At 56% of our budget, our ability to support our investment for education requires sound reasoning and realistic goals. A selectman must possess the qualities to provide necessary compromises to achieve the desired results. As I have on many occasions proven that I have those qualities, I'm asking for your vote. A true measure of any community is the manner in which its leaders respond to the needs of its most vulnerable population. I am proud to say that during the COVID-19 crisis, more than 2,500 seniors were served with transportation, meals, and proactive outreach. Some in our community would have you believe that your taxes are solely determined by the town budget. In reality, the primary reason for tax increases is directly related to increases in home values and a decline in our commercial tax base. In fact, Kingston is a highly desirable town to live in, which raises the value of our homes. In fact, our tax rate has actually declined over the last five years from $17.61 to $16.28. In fact, our commercial tax base has eroded from 28% to 11%, resulting in residential taxpayers carrying a disproportionate percentage of the tax burden. As a response, our economic development efforts have brought in projects that will create more than 1,100 uh, new jobs and substantial revenues. Upon completion, one project, a professional complex, will become the largest taxpayer in Kingston. For these reasons and many others, I wish to continue that work for you as a selectman. And I can only do this with your vote on election day, June 27th. Thank you. Thank you, that was Sandy McFarland. There are two candidates on the recall ballot for this one Board of Selectmen seat. Welcome first to Richard Arruda. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Okay. Please proceed with your candidate statement, and you have three minutes. Thank you. My name is Dick Arruda. I'm running for a seat on the Board of Selectmen under the recall petition. I'm married. My wife, Lynn, and I have two girls, three granddaughters. Uh, I have an associate's degree in law enforcement. I, upon graduation from high school, I went in the Marine Corps, spent four years in the Marine Corps, one tour of duty in Vietnam. I have spent almost my entire adult life in public service. I spent 30 plus years on the Kingston Police Department, 24 as a detective. I have served six years on the Kingston Board of Health, six years as a member of the Board of Selectmen, and four years on capital planning. Why am I running on the board for, the, for this seat on the Board of Selectmen? I've always followed local politics, uh, and there appeared to be a, a little res disrespect shown between members of the Board of Selectmen and the public. There appeared to be a time for change. I got involved with the recall group. I uh, studied what they were about. I, it appeared to me that they were headed in the right direction. I got involved, I supported everything they did. And I hope that on June 27th, everyone that signed that recall petition, over 2,300, registered Kingston voters signed to have a recall petition put on our ballot on June 27th. I, I'm asking all of you that signed it to please go vote. And remember, it's, there's actually two ballots, one for the regular June 27th election, which will include members of the Board of Selectmen, um, different uh, candidates for other offices in town, 
And after you vote on the regular election, you'll be handed a ballot for the recall election. I ask that you please check off, yes, I believe in the recall, and please vote for Dick Arruda on June 27th. Thank you. Thank you. First question, how would you differentiate yourself from your opponent? You have two minutes. Okay, number one, I'm not a micromanager. Uh, I, don't adver I, I do advocate the open forum portion of public meetings. I think it's a, a great way to get to uh, gauge exactly how the board or the committee is doing. I'm not afraid to make mistakes and I welcome constructive criticism. I think I'm, 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 I'm an honest and transparent person. I believe in the team concept with regard to the performance of duties and responsibilities of any board or committee that I've ever been on. There is no I in team. And for those reasons, I believe that's, that's the difference between my opponent and myself. Thank you. Second question. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You have two minutes. Thank you. The priorities for the town, these are, this is a very crazy time we're living in. I think it's very important, number one, that we maintain public safety in the basic services for the town of Kingston. People need to feel, feel safe and uh, we have to be sure that we pro pro uh, provide adequate funding for the different departments in town and especially the school. The school is gonna be a very difficult uh, situation to deal with. We have to also uh, cut unnecessary spending. I think we could take a, a position of, in a lot of places where we should fix equipment rather than replace it, if that's possible. Um, and I think we have to follow the, the guidelines of the state and local authorities regarding this phase opening for the town businesses and recreation areas. We have to work with the school. Again, we have to work with the school to make sure that there's an adequate plan in place to reopen the schools in, fall, in the fall. It's very, very important that, that we fund that school and we get the kids back where they belong in the public schools. Thank you. Thank you. That was Richard Arruda. We are now welcoming Elaine Fiore. Welcome, Elaine. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You will have three minutes. Thank you, Julie. I want to start out by thanking everyone who voted for my re-election last year. Currently, I am the target of a recall effort to terminate me as a sitting selectman, not allowing me to complete the remaining two years of my term. I have the choice of spending the time allotted to me today dispelling false information, lies, unjust accusations about me, or to explain to you why I should be allowed to finish the two years remaining on my term. I choose the latter. I spend my time and energy focused on town business rather than engaging with those on Facebook who are anti-Elaine, anti-Kingston, or attack town officials for sport. As a member of the select board, I represent the town of Kingston in all that I do and say. I take that responsibility very seriously. I have demonstrated my ability to stay calm in difficult situations. I routinely meet with the staff in the selectman's office to be briefed on anything from the agenda packet for the next selectman's meeting to budget discussions or prepping for town meeting. Depending on the discussions, I attend additional meetings, reach out to department heads, boards, and committees to fill in the blanks for any questions or concerns I may have. It is my responsibility to be prepared to discuss debate and vote on any, any item when presented. I am an active member of the community. I was the first selectman to join the Kingston Business Association to listen and learn the challenges local businesses face. I volunteer my time as president of the Friends of the Kingston Council on Aging. I am very fortunate to serve with a wonderful group of women who are dedicated to the seniors in town. Recently, on behalf of the Friends, 
I submitted a successful grant application to Eversource. The grant will fund the social event of the year, appropriately called Making Up for the Lost Time. I had been asked a while ago to participate as a selectman in a field trip the first graders were taking to the townhouse. Like many things, the trip was canceled because of COVID. I was pleasantly surprised to be asked just recently to participate in a virtual tour for the first graders. I taped the inside of the townhouse while describing what a selectman does. I enjoyed participating because I was able to be involved with something that kids could learn from as I learned a new skill set myself, how to create a video. I'm ready to provide the town the leadership needed to navigate the difficult times ahead of us, COVID-19, budget cuts, reductions to services, and a general unrest in the country. I'm asking for your vote once again on June 27th so I may continue to work for you as a member of the select board. Please vote no for the recall and please vote for the re-election of Elaine Fiore. Thank you. First question, how would you differentiate yourself from your opponent? You will have two minutes. I have a proven success rate as a member of the select board. The economic development efforts I am personally involved in have been recognized by state and federal agencies. As a selectman, I have worked with Plymouth and voted to open up William Gould Way, which the state sees in, as an opportunity for the region, just not Kingston. The town received $6 million in state funds as a result of a meeting I was invited to attend with the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development to explain the merits of a grant application I spearheaded. In September, I was invited to be a panelist at a regional economic diversification summit and spoke with representatives from the Philadelphia Office of EDA, Economic Development, Department of Transportation, Mass Development, Mass DEP, and local dignitaries. I have access to a wide range of professionals at the state and local level who I can call on when necessary. I understand unless town meeting votes to purchase every piece of private property in town, there will be development. If a project meets all the bylaws and has been vetted by the appropriate boards and committees, permits will be issued. I understand supporting indivi individuals who use social media to attack potential business opportunities before boards and committees have even completed their review is counterproductive. I will not conduct town, be town business on Facebook. I will continue to make decisions based on input from residents facts provided to me by professionals along with my own research. I will continue to offer recommendations, input, and solutions to the challenges, issues, and obstacles the town will face over the next few years. I will continue to demonstrate my competency and professionalism while serving as a member of the select board. Thank you. Second question. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You again have two minutes. My top three priorities are Kingston residents, revenue and town services. Residents have told me they want quality services and affordable real estate taxes. To attain these goals, you need revenue. My main focus for the past few years has been creating opportunities for commercial growth in town and alternative housing for those wishing to stay in Kingston and downsize. I have been proactive the past few years, obtaining grants, discussing and collaborating with project applicants, department heads, boards, and committees to get to the position we're at today, where the projects will start to produce revenue. The timing couldn't be better. During these difficult times, we are anticipating a $1.2 million reduction in revenue requiring services to be reduced and possibly eliminated. The projects already keyed up, Amazon, the residential apartments at Kingston Collections, electronic signage on Route 3 and Route 44, and the solar arrays on the capped landfill, when completed, will conservatively, conservatively generate an additional $1.5 million in revenue. Prior to COVID, 19, the revenue at the least would have helped to stabilize real estate taxes. Now the 1.5 million will be critical in, re in restoring reduced services. I have been involved in housing discussions for one or two bedroom developments, over 55 housing apartments, over retail stores in a cottage community concept. 
Any of these housing opportunities will generate customers to, to local businesses while adding little impact to services. I trust the appropriate boards and committees will resolve any traffic and construction issues the projects may create prior to permits being issued. All three of these priorities have been my focus and will continue to be my focus. Thank you. That was Elaine Fiore. Welcome, Kimberly M. Burke. Hi, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You have three minutes. Thank you. My name is Kimberly Emberg, and I'm running for selectman in the recall election. I came to Kingston by way of my husband, as this is where he grew up. In fact, the Emberg family moved to Kingston in 1988 and has been here ever since. My childhood was spent in a small town in New Hampshire, about 20 minutes west of Concord, where I was very lucky to be close to a large extended family. I graduated from Mount Holyoke College in Western Massachusetts with degrees in psychology and sociology. I'm currently a marketing consultant and I'm fortunate to have extensive experience in customer service, communications, and management. I have managed departments, balanced budgets, worked with cross-functional teams, inspired large groups of volunteers, and have hired and fired employees. In addition, as a mother of four boys, I'm skilled at conflict management and resolving disagreements. All of my skills and professional experiences will be extremely useful on the Board of Selectmen. Kingston needs a Board of Selectmen who can work together and with employees and residents to find solutions to problems collaboratively. We need to find ways to share information and communicate more clearly to ensure that people understand not only what's going on, but where they can easily access information and have their questions answered. Problems cannot be solved by shutting down public participation and limiting access to information. Everyone deserves to have their voices heard and respected. You can learn a lot by listening to what others have to say, even if you have a difference of opinion. It is possible, in fact, it's more productive to work with and talk with people with differing viewpoints, because only by listening to the perspectives of others and really weighing different opinions can you truly make informed decisions. I believe I'm the right choice to represent you on the Board of Selectmen because I value honesty, integrity, transparency, and efficiency. With issues we are already facing, combined with the impacts of the pandemic still weighing heavily on our community, we must find a way to talk through our differences and come together to find viable solutions. Our town has been divided for quite some time. However, with over 2,200 residents signing the recall petitions from all over the political and socioeconomic spectrum, this is the first step in our community healing and really coming back together. I hope you will join me on June 27th in voting yes for the recalls and encourage you to vote for me, Kimberly Ember, to represent you on the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Your first question, how would you differentiate yourself from your opponent? You have two minutes. I would work collaboratively with my board members. I would not berate them in public meetings. I would reach out to them to make sure they have access to the information they need so that we could work collaboratively and be effective in our meetings. I will listen. Good governance requires transparency, inclusiveness, accountability, and consensus. I believe Kingston is lacking in many of these areas. The first place I would start is communication and listening. To do this, I would have office hours, I would work to reinstate public participation in our board meetings, and I would work to help the town have a stronger online presence to respond to residents' concerns and keep our citizens informed. I will treat residents and my fellow board members with respect. I have a passion and a drive to set and achieve goals that stems from my childhood. When I was growing up, my family spent our vacations hiking the Appalachian Trail. We started with small sections when I was three years old and slowly hiked more and more in pieces until finally finishing the entire 2100 mile trek when I was 16. That experience was instrumental in teaching me the importance of dedication, perseverance, and honesty. I approach everything with an open mind. I look for facts and analyze data to ensure efficiency and productivity. 
I'm not afraid to ask difficult questions nor to take on new challenges. If I don't know the answer to a question, I will find the answer through extensive research and consulting with relevant experts as a way to share important knowledge. If I make a mistake, I'm not afraid to admit it and I make changes to keep from making that same mistake again. I am an experienced and collaborative, cooperative leader and look forward to bringing my integrity and skills to the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Second question. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You again have two minutes. I presume you're referring to the COVID-19 health crisis, in which case I suggest the top three priorities for the town are protecting our residents, managing our way through the significant fiscal impacts, and restoring normalcy to the greatest extent that we can. It is important that we take the necessary steps to ensure the safety of all of our residents. To that end, I would follow the recommendations of our town's health experts, including our Board of Health, our health agent, and our fire chief. While the health impacts have been devastating for some, the fiscal impacts will affect all of us and for some time to come. We need to impart serious restraint on our spending. We need to maximize every grant, stimulus, and reimbursement opportunity to cover the impacts of this pandemic, and we need to do it now. We need to work together to, to develop safe plans to reopen our local businesses, engage in community activities, and identify how we are going to reopen the schools in the fall. To accomplish this, we need to identify the right people to put in the right seats at the table and really roll up our sleeves. Though we have guidance from the state, we know our community best and we can develop nuanced methods for restarting our lives again. When it is safe to do so, we also need to identify small, safe community events to reintroduce ourselves to our neighbors. Thank you. That was Kimberly Emberg. We welcome Josh Warren. Welcome, Josh. Julie, good to see you. Thank you for, uh, for organizing all this. Thank you. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You have three minutes. When my wife and I started thinking about where we wanted to raise our family, we knew we belonged on the South Shore. I grew up in Marshfield and Lisa grew up in Kingston. It didn't take long for her to sell me on her hometown. We wanted to have easy access to the Cape and Boston, access to fresh and saltwater resources, we wanted to be surrounded by miles of hiking and walking trails, and we wanted our son Saul to have access to the same school system that had prepared Lisa for success in college and the workforce. We bought our house eight years ago, and we got married in the backyard that fall. We've made many memories in our home and in town, and we both do our part to support the community that we're proud to live in. Lisa is a Kingston Public Library trustee, and me as a member of the Board of Selectmen. We are in the midst of a public health crisis in challenging economic times. Kingston needs competent leaders who have a record and a demonstrated commitment to doing the job. Since being elected to the Board of Selectmen in 2018, I've spent countless hours supporting and driving forward the projects that will deliver jobs, commercial tax revenue, and a diversified housing market to the town of Kingston. I've worked hand in hand with fellow board members, professional staff, and others to secure $6 million in economic development grants that will make projects like Amazon's distribution center on William Gould Way and the Trammell Crow Apartments at the Kingston Collection a reality and will stabilize residential taxes. Recently, I've worked alongside a team of officials to manage Kingston's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In this response, I've led twice daily conference calls for the Kingston Board of Selectmen and Kingston's emergency management team. I've provided a constant stream of information to Kingston residents and employees through daily advisory letters on the town's website, twice weekly programs on PAC-TV and public service announcements on WATD. Over the last two years, I've taken on additional responsibilities in my role as selectman. For two years, I've served as the chairman of the Central Plymouth County Water District Advisory Board, as a member of the Renewable Energy Grants and Loan Opportunities Committee, and I've hosted a monthly program on PAC-TV called Good Day Kingston. For the last year, I've served as chairman of the Kingston Board of Selectmen, as a trustee for the Elizabeth B. Sampson Memorial Fund, and as a voting member of the Plymouth County Advisory Board all which has given me incredible insight as to how to support the needs of 550 employees and approximately 13,000 residents, all on top of working a full-time job. I've also served as a planning member of the Kingston Business Association's Waterfront Festival and done my part to champion the efforts of the Kingston Farmers Market, the Jones River Watershed Association, and the Kingston Public Library Foundation. Despite always putting the town's interests first, sometimes at a personal cost, 
I'm currently the subject of a deceptive recall campaign initiated by Peter Bonsek and my opponent, Kim Embert. Together, they've attacked my character and called my priorities into question. I'm Joshua Warren, chairman of the Kingston Board of Selectmen, and I believe in all that Kingston can be. Over the last two years, I've worked hard for you, my fellow residents, and I humbly ask for your vote against this deceptive recall and your vote to reelect me on Saturday, June 27th. Thank you. First question, how would you differentiate yourself from your opponent? You have two minutes. Thank you, Julie. Personally, I know very little about my opponent. What I do know, however, is that as chairman of the Board of Selectmen, I rely on experts to provide me and my members with the information we need to make informed decisions each and every day. Unlike Ms. Emberg, who relies on those who shout loudest on Facebook to shape her opinions. As a board member, I strive for productive conversation rather than behavior that divides our community, belittles our hardworking staff, and discourages new businesses, new families, and talented new staff from coming to Kingston. COVID-19 has significantly impacted the lives of all those in our community, whether it be by the loss of livelihood, struggles at home, illness, or worse, the loss of a loved one. No one has been untouched by this virus. As a town, COVID-19 has affected our operating budget. The state of Massachusetts and the Mass Municipal Association forecast a significant reduction, 15% cuts in local aid, I'm sorry, in state aid, and the town's financial team has estimated a further reduction of $300,000 in local receipts. Coming out of our annual town meeting, Kingston needs competent leaders who have restructured the town budget while endeavoring to maintain critical town services. The plan is complete, but the implementation will be a challenge. We need experienced leadership to guide us through these uncertain times in this new fiscal year. For the last two years, I've sat at the table with developers, business owners, property owners, department heads, members of boards and commissions, state and federal partners, and concerned residents to drive economic development projects that are in line with Kingston's master plan. At the time when devastating cuts to aid are looming and unemployment rates are projected to hit as high as 25%, there's never been a more important time than now to attract and nurture development projects that will bring jobs and new revenue, which will decrease the burden on our residential taxpayers. So how do I differentiate myself from my opponent? I have the experience and the ability to come to work on day one, just as I have for the last 24 months in an effort to build our commercial tax base, which will result in relief for our residents. Thank you. Second question. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You again have two minutes. There's no question that COVID-19 will have a tremendous impact on the town of Kingston. I know this because for the last three months I've sat at the table and been at the forefront of our town's response to this pandemic. As this crisis continues, one of my top priorities will be to continue making difficult and sometimes unpopular decisions to put the health and safety of our residents and staff first. As your selectman, I will continue to support our first responders, public health officials, and department heads to ensure that communication remains frequent, possible points of transmission are limited, and we all remain healthy. My second priority will be to, to drive economic and regional development in an effort to stabilize taxes for residents. Since being elected, one of my top priorities has been economic development. Over the last two years, I've developed working relationships and a strong rapport with developers, business owners, department heads, members of boards and commissions, state and federal partners, corporate executives, and residents to drive economic development projects that are in line with our master plan. We project upwards of $2.1 million in new growth in the coming years with the potential of an additional $1 million in new growth should the voters at this year's annual town meeting vote to support the granting of an easement to allow for construction of a commercial center that will generate revenue here in Kingston while directing traffic through and deriving utilities from the town of Plymouth. My third priority and one that hits very close to home is to bring civility back to local government. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that as a selectman in the town of Kingston, I'd be subjected to death threats or would have cell phones shoved in my face when I visit the transfer station, travel to the grocery store or enter the townhouse. If this current vitriol continues, who among us would make the decision to serve? If all positions are driven by misinformation and unsubstantiated data, who among us would enter into a debate in this political arena? I don't respond not because I have nothing to say, but because I won't validate that type of behavior. Those on both sides of the issues are entitled to their own opinions, but not their own facts. I pledge to the residents of Kingston to continue my efforts to lead our town through these times and return civility to local government. Thank you. That was Josh Warren. Please remember to vote in the town election scheduled to be held on Saturday, June 27th. I'm Julie Thompson for PAC-TV. Stay informed. Keep it local. Good day.